It's Brian Preston, the money guy. Uh, the next one is another question about our taxable buckets. Um, and I just couldn't resist asking it because it was such a good question. So Braden is 29 and he's married and they max out all tax advantaged retirement accounts, which is 45% of their take home pay. So not mm-hmm. sure how much that is of gross income, but it sounds like it's probably at least 25% of their gross. And they want to know how to know when they start filling the third bucket of a taxable account, assuming a typical retirement age. So if they're retiring at 65 or 67, when do they need to start worrying about a uh, taxable account or do they, and how should they look at that? Yeah, this is, this is, and you, did you say 40 or 45% savings rate? 45% of take home pay. 45% of take home. (laughs) Man, Braden is definitely a financial mutant because that that's incredible. I mean, that's one of those things where if you're saving 45, I had written 40%, so 45%, that's got a gold star on it. Um, Brayden, here's what I would tell you. If somebody who's saving at that threshold, and I think, did, did Daniel, did he mention that, he, that potentially his family wants to leave the workforce early? Yeah, so Braden said assuming a typical retirement age, so it sounds like right now he's planning on – you know, 65 or 67, okay. but could okay. change. So, so that, that does change my, my thoughts a little bit. Brayden, and this will be good for everybody in the audience too, because I think this is why I love financial planning is because it is so specialized. And that's why, yes, we can give you, and I always try to, when I answer these Q&A shows, I try to give everybody the breadcrumbs or the nuggets to, to try to figure out how this pertains to your personal situation. But everybody's a little different because, you know, it's not uncommon when you hear somebody saving 40 Five percent of their take home, um, you, you're like, well, they must want to retire when they're 45 or 50 years of age. But Braden right here is saying, hey, I'm okay working until normal retirement age, or at least that's what's been put out before us. So that's going to be different from somebody who's trying to leave the workforce when they're 50 years old. So let's let's take this and let's talk about what can somebody apply to this. Um, I when I find out somebody is saving at this threshold. I would say kudos to you, but also let's make sure you're enjoying each decade of life that you're in. I pick on Bo um, when when we were talking about, because I think it's just an achiever's curse in the fact that, especially if you don't come for money, because I was I, I had a couple, I had dinner with another couple, my wife and I did, and we were just talking about how in our 20s and 30s, we were in such a hurry to get through all the things we thought meant success in life, like go find a spouse, you know. Go buy the first house. Make sure you you know you have children by this age. There was just a lot of pressure you're putting on yourself to get through all the mo- the things that you think are attributed to success. I would tell you to make sure that you're also building in to enjoy the sweetness of every decade of life. I look back at my own life. You know, I loved that in the, the when I was in my twenties, my wife and I went to Italy on a trip before we had kids. We did it dirt poor, where we got ripped off in all the cities. We were dragging our luggage down cobblestone. Um, we were using all the public transportation. We had no tour guides, so we, we had all kind of language barrier issues. But now I look back with such sweetness on the blossoming memories that even the things that were stressful were phenomenal long term because they just add to the storytelling and just the memories of that situation. So Braden, I, I'm going to just say, just give it that much of a pass is just make sure that you are enjoying each decade because I don't want you, there's a fine line between financial mutant and a financial miser. I want to make sure that you are maximizing the fun that you should have by every decade too. But I do think it's one of those things where if you're typical retirement age and you're saving 45%, then yeah, let's make sure that we're taking advantage of all all the tax favored stuff. And that's why with traditional financial order of operations, moneyguy.com slash resources, or if you want a deeper dive, you can go to learn.moneyguy.com for our course on the financial order of operations. But there's a reason that it prioritizes, you know, the maxing out retirement, the Roth IRA and HSAs. Is, you know, before we get to step seven, which is hyperaccumulation, which has the three buckets, is because the government limits. How much, how much you can put in all these different accounts because they are really frothy from a tax benefit wise. So, Braden, if you're going to retire at a normal age, I would tell you there's nothing wrong with loading up all those retirement accounts and then going through them and then eventually coming to that that step seven, which is hyperaccumulation and getting the three buckets. But if you're a person that wants to retire 
early or you want to make sure you have after-tax money so you can pay cash for a car, I'm going to give you permission is once you've exceeded 25% of your gross income or your take-home pay, you know, 25% of your gross income and savings, you can go ahead and move to step seven. So it's really, that's where I'm telling you the personalization or customization of your situation and when you'll need this money will help guide you on, hey, should I go ahead, once I'm over 25%, graduate to step seven, hyperaccumulation in the three bucket strategy, or should I stay back because I know I'm going to work until 65, so maybe it makes more sense to load up and get the tax benefit of these retirement accounts before I go and start doing the taxable side of things. You have a little freedom there to kind of play in, but for me, the graduation point is 25% of your gross income is being saved in, in those in, in, on step six.